Hi YouTube, I thought I'd talk to you while I roll some cigarettes. Um, I'm going to share uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson um, had a interview with a data specialist and the name of the video is the epidemic that dare not speak its name and um, actually it's about how some groups of people are actually pushing that there's too many people on the planet well there's proof that that's been not it's not true and they go really deep into why that isn't true and how many countries they've been to and what they know about it and it's really good it's uh 146 minutes 29 seconds it it's well worth it and then he does a break in between and tells you about another um, series of videos that he's made that um, when he made this one, it's, it's one that he re-uploaded, I think, because uh, he I, the, one, the thing that he's talking about in, in the middle of it is about Exodus the, in the book, in the Bible. And uh, I already saw that he had done that. So I think this is an older video and older information, but I don't think a lot of people looked at it the way that it's being looked at and is deep and by professionals in the world. I think it's important for people to know the actual facts and that we can share that and hopefully we'll share that information on a big scale because the, the younger generation, like I've been trying to, trying to say, and we all know it, but taking action to prevent the younger people from being in trouble in the future is the, the main issue in life. So I saw a really cool meme. It was like the best meme ever. And it said, um, as long as you love yourself, it doesn't matter if anybody else doesn't you know and that is true and i told doug that too it's that's exactly how i feel you know i was thinking that this morning you know i really don't give a lot of um credence to people that i don't think as highly i mean if i don't want if they're how what weight do i take to their opinion is what I'm saying. I mean, anybody has a, a value as a human on this planet. Even the worst of pers persons have that innately. But, um, you know, like I've always said too, what can what can we live around, or what what would we want to be around, might be two different things, or even if we had put up with something in the past would we put up with it now you know those all for me those aren't even questions it's something that i've come to terms with you know when somebody betrays you when promises are broken um they're broken sometimes you can't fix broken um, you can move on, you know, but actually sometimes, well, you know, there's a thing too. I think it's a, a Japanese thing that if you have broken pottery, um, and you glue it back together, um, it shows that it's still functional, even though it's broken, it's still a beautiful piece, you know, um, something to that effect and yeah yeah i know it, it like it, it intrinsically in the world it has its purpose and reason but maybe not for everybody you know 
So that's where I'm with that. <laughs> so Doug called the tow truck again, same old thing. So I finally wrote the dude and I told him what happened. And I did say I was going to make a YouTube video on him. Um, I'm, that's up in the air, see, because this is somebody, I, I had my truck fixed at that shop. And um, that was when somebody else was doing all the work, though, a friend of ours worked there. And when he ran the tow truck and all that, there weren't all these funky problems that we've been having with this person. So he got new drivers and uh, I, I think some of you have heard it before, but the dude uh, almost wiped out a $8,000 truck and the side of our shop. That's not funny shit. So anyway, enough with that. I mean, I, you know, that brings me back to a uh, defending Doug, you know, and I normally wouldn't have, but I mean, when a person has a tow service and then, uh, he sat here for four hours. Another time he sat out on the road in the cold, um, with no cell phone. He had borrowed a cell phone, I think from a pass or from a driver going by and was able to call that service and eventually had to like flag somebody down or something. Even the cops stopped and talked to him. So this has happened like a few times with this person, but it really did all start with incompetent drivers, you know, so, and I can drive a big truck. I mean, a rig. So, um, I saw what was going on, you know, so I decided to write the dude and it's like, yeah, this is what happened, you know, and that I was going to tell people, but God sees them anyway. And I know that's a fact, you know, and he said he had so many customers he doesn't need and basically doesn't need us, you know. I don't know if he remembers that I spent quite a bit of money up in his shop, but I don't think he could care less anyway. Um, but it isn't just Doug that's snowed in. Well, he did get his tractor unstuck now. And I saw our tow service tried to call back again because she had called one time and I answered it and I usually don't, but, um, and said that they were still trying and all this stuff. It's like, this is just whatever. AAA used to be so good, you know. I mean, really reliable, you know, until all this shit happened with this funky little driver. And I guess one other driver Doug was kind of mean to, too. So I don't know. I think like the dude says, he really doesn't, he probably doesn't even really need to have triple A through his shop, but, um, probably has it because I suspect he's a Mason and the other Masons will come and kiss his ass like they all do so they can work in a small community and treat people that aren't in their little club like shit. So that's, exactly what's going on just thought i'd let you know when you watch this keith so yeah and i will let the average person around and you you old great big blowing up old guys are starting to diminish anyway so the typical people unless you have kids that can actually turn a wrench and mm, i don't know hard to think that could actually be possible but then a lot of stuff's computerized so and sometimes kids are smarter than their parents sometimes so either way yeah I know a lot of the shit you've done to people and exactly how you got your hot rod and the rest of the stories so or hearsay 
I guess we'll say. But I do know how you treat people on a personal level. And I wasn't going to call you any names that you actually deserve. So, yeah. And I still might make a video and just send it. Um, send it around. And let people know the average person. Don't ever take your vehicle there and spend big bucks because the dude does not deserve it. This is what happened to me. So, and no, no altercations or foul language would have came out of nobody on this property if people had done their job right. And even so, and I wrote the dude, I was like, the difference when it the guy actually hit our shop was that he profusely apologized. He cared and um, actually made Doug a belt with his hot rod on it um, because he felt that bad. And so we didn't sue them. You know, we worked it out as human beings. But these things wouldn't, didn't, didn't even, the dude when he did it, didn't even think twice about it. He's like, he pulls up and he's like, uh, where do you want it? There was like one spot. I I don't know. It's the dumbest shit I ever saw. Whatever. And couldn't even back the truck up. But whatever. So I was there. I saw it. I know what's up. So y'all can kiss each other's butts. That's the way that is. But God will get you for your bullshit. You know. So. <laughs> Actually, may all your customers be just like Doug. <laughs> That's what I could wish on somebody. Yeah, he's not rude to everybody, but yeah, it happens. Uh, yeah, he's rude. A lot of you men out there are very rude. As a matter of fact, you deserve each other. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. But there was a reason for it typically just doesn't happen in a business situation, you know. So, or any situation, it actually shouldn't even happen. So. But I did, I do have a lie documented. First, it's like, we didn't get the call. But then, then it was like, um, they called, but it was the tractor that was stuck. And it, no, it was the Mustang that we had listed with the license plate number that was given to the lady and so anyway yeah yeah and yes the tractor is stuck too <laughs> so he wouldn't have known that if he hadn't a he said he didn't even get a call liar you know and i have the lie documented and then right after he lied he told the truth because we were talking back and forth and i have it all documented you know and made copies, you know, sent them to Doug. I'm like, look at that shit. That's disgraceful. So, <laughs> you know, all because he does not like them. Well, that's too bad. Then don't do business at all, you know. I've ran a business. If I didn't like a customer, I would probably call them, though. If I had a tow truck service, I would personally call them and say, look, dude, I don't like you, and I'm not ever going to do business with you again, you know. But that's just me. Or if somebody called and wanted that service, I would make it very clear, you know, the first time around. Not let somebody sit. That's just it. He did take the call. I found out he lied about it and left Doug sit for four more hours and this isn't the first time he's done it and his license for um, being a triple A roadside service provider, a gold gold member, not just your regular. We pay bigger bucks to have the best service and this is bullshit. So that's the bottom line right there. And if you can't deal with a crabby cu customer, then you're a poor business person. I've had a lot of really horrible customers, but the money was good and the money was there. 
you know, I'm not saying it's not that a person should take abuse, but we were not in the fault. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm going to make a video on it. Nah, I'm not just going to let it go. There wasn't even an apology when the shit happened, and it was just like an instant smear campaign, you know, so it's like, no. So that's what's going on around here today. <laughs> but yeah, Doug finally, um, he had tied to our um, international dump truck, had put a winch on it and some chains and stuff and put it to the tractor and got it, got it. See, it was just stuck on ice, basically, is what we're dealing with. We're not like, but we have snow coming so we had to take care like i got wood in and um because if the power goes out we'll still be able to heat ourselves and cook something or whatever you know so it's been a heck of a day hey one more month tomorrow on let me see yeah april 9th is when i was able to start doing uh, my exercises again so and yeah I hurt my arm but I still I I'm doing them just not as hard as I was at that first um Sean Baker MD was uh 30 for 30 30 push-ups for 30 days it was a challenge and it's like I can probably do this because I had been doing an awful lot of, even after breaking my arm in a few places and then hurt my other one recently, but um, building my strength back up. See, if I had never been strong, I wouldn't have been able to do that, but I was. <laughs> so lucky me, <laughs> you know. No, it's okay. I think if a person loves themselves and they're a total shit, <laughs> hey, go for it. But does God love you? That's what I ask myself. Does God love me? Does Well, even if I get angry at stupid people and I want to beat their asses, does that mean God doesn't love me and that's how he made me? Well, that's how he made me. I'm not going to act like that when I'm when I go home. But I'm not putting the fire out while I'm here, not anytime soon, because truth always wins over lies, one way or another, doesn't matter who says what. So I'll stick with the people that actually love me out in the world, that like me, like my personality, and wouldn't betray me, or break promises, or, you know, people of integrity. You know, I'll stick with those ones because those are the type of people I like too. You know, so there's a few of them. You know, yeah, I bring up God a lot, but the people I admire, like if they're like, say, if they're a psychologist and they're good at their job and they love people, but. They don't have God in their life. Their whole outlook on psychology is on a whole nother level. You're, you're like a, a people pleaser psychologist making money, or you're a psychology professor that has God in his heart. And it seems to go on a different level no matter what if it's a behavioral disorder or what it is that um, we all have our little things, but he's able to go into it on a deeper level with God in his heart. And when somebody spits out something that I can just say, hey, that sounds like me, then I know I'm on the right track. And, and every person that I have admiration for conducts their life with self-examination first you know they love their selves and they have a right to love their selves those are the people that i know like me too so i'm going to stick with them 
the heck with what anybody says. If they don't like you, there's something wrong with them. Now, if a lot of people don't like you, you could say, well, there's something wrong with you. And that was one aspect that um, Jordan Peterson said. And I thought, well, I don't know. There's people that love and hate me at the same time. And there's a lot of them. And there's some that there is a lot that just hate me. And maybe it is just me. But in this world, I'm not supposed to be of this world. So on those points and what I stand for, I'll let that just be me. I'm cool with that. And I do love myself. So, um, and nothing I do hurts another human being. I'll look into their future for them when they're not doing that, you know, and see. And that's a part of what um, a lot of the deception that's going on with the world not being able to sustain itself, the big lies that are being told with all that. A part of the reason why I'm going to share Dr. Jordan's um interview with this man who made a documentary he went all around the world several countries i mean like 18 different places or more and then even after he did his documentary he went to like three more places and um collected the data on just what was going on in the world for people to see and he's got it all documented so I'm going to share that so you can get that information out there. So, or if you don't like me, just go to Dr. Jordan's page and you can share it out for, from there. And I'll be very unladylike and say, you're, <laughs> you're a jerk. You never share my shit because it ain't shit, I guess. That's why a lot of people can't swallow the truth of things and they probably don't even want to hear there's a lot of people that don't want to hear me talk deep about um behavioral disorders and psychological problems on this planet and my opinion about all that and i value my opinion because it started with my education with psych 101 and just I mean, actually, before that, because I was studying psychology in Masonic libraries from, I can't remember when, I couldn't even read when I first picked up, like, probably Freud, you know, it's like, yeah, I'd look at it, and it's like, well, I didn't really know what was going on right then, but I'd put it back, and find something more age appropriate but finally one day I'm like reading it you know that type of thing and what a fruitcake that dude was huh and th same with uh Jordan Peterson he will quote Carl Jung a lot I'm not a big fan of Jung he was more of a, a Buddhist mindset, which is nothing wrong with that because even a lot of the the aspects to how I do believe coincide with that. But um, yeah, it's not a religion I could put my finger on and say this is what I, what it's described as because what people view as Christianity doesn't go into the Akashic records deep enough and the truth of what we can see in our mind's eye and the truth of everything we do know on this planet and how we communicate with Christ's blood in us or how we don't, you know. All in all, it's a pretty good day. Not bad. Could be better, but it's not bad. I intend on having a relaxing evening, hopefully. 
but I really am um, more leaning on the side of finding a small motor home and going somewhere and getting a little job and deciding where I want to be for the rest of my life because I do not know right now. Don't know. But that's kind of where I'm um, leaning towards something like that or just going in a city and even having the state help me or do a GoFundMe or something. I don't know. I, I don't really want to beg nobody for nothing, so um, maybe someday my videos will get out there and I could get like a check and go buy a motorhome and then I'd be doing my videos on the road. You know? Anyway, there's a really cool campground way up north that I love. I wouldn't even mind going up there. For most of the month, I'd have to find some place to winter. But I do love it up there. It's on the side of a mountain by the lake. It's so pretty. So. Yeah, before I get cut off and I can't um, express my thank yous for your being here and Please share this. I mean, you know, even if, I mean, some people actually like my videos. They give me a thumbs up because I know they enjoy my company. So, I, you know, I would be appreciated, you know, big time. A share would be cool, too, because the information that I am going to share with you that I took the time to analyze for everybody I see as a very important thing and I hope you do too. I hope you find some value where it really is a valuable thing. So I love you all. Have a really good night or day wherever you're at. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA.